Well, hello there. You've stumbled across this video. Maybe you're an aspiring rider, you've been watching some videos on the internet, and you've been thinking about getting into this insane lifestyle we call riding a motorcycle because, well, there's few things left in this world that are truly unsafe. Welcome, my child. This is the place for you. I am Papa Yam. Today's video is all about the very worst beginner bikes. Now, as a beginner rider, you're gonna wanna look for a very specific set of characteristics in a bike. It needs to be lightweight, quick, but not blisteringly fast, flickable, and reliable. For those of you wondering, this is a list of everything you should not buy. Rounding us off today, number 10 stretched and lowered bikes. So these bikes aren't a specific model, but odds are they're gonna be at least a 600, 1000, or maybe even up to a BUSA. Don't think that just because you can flat foot a leader bike and is lower to the ground that it's gonna be any safer. With a stretched frame, you're gonna have difficulty performing the most basic of low speed maneuvers. If you thought doing a U-turn was hard, you will probably need a football feel to execute one on a stretched bike. For a beginner, you're not gonna learn anything on these bikes. If you're into it, get into it after you learn how to perform low speed maneuvers, corner, and other basic things. The stretched bike is for drag racing. So if you're not gonna do that, Papa Yam advises you to not spend the money. Actually, don't stretch your bike at all. It's not a cool look. Do you own a stretched bike? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Sound off and tell me all about it. Number nine, the Honda Goldwing. And you might be thinking, Yami, yeah, why is this bike on your list? Because someone is trying to get into bikes to get a Goldwing as their ultimate end goal. That's why. At over 830 pounds, the Goldwing makes a terrible beginner bike, not only because of its weight, but also because of its size. There's nothing wrong with this bike for the experienced rider. It's a great touring machine. But for the beginner, this is not going to be nimble at all. This is a purpose-driven bike. When you get on a Goldwing, you're not cruising around because it's a hot summer night. No, you're going somewhere and you already know what the road ahead is going to be like. This bike is hard to handle, flick, and learn on, and if it goes down, you might not be able to pick it back up at all. For that, it's not a good beginner bike. Even if you finalized your second divorce and sent your kids off to a great college, no circumstances life is going to make this bike great for a beginner. I would like to point out, however, that anything is possible, and I've seen gold wings ripping it off-road. Don't believe me? Look at these crazy bastards over at Dos Honduros. Remember guys, anything is an off-road bike if you try hard enough. Number eight, it's the MV Agusa F3 800. So you want a street legal race bike as your starter. Think again. Anything made by MV should probably be the bike after you drop your first one a couple of times and put on about 10,000 miles on it. The F3 800 is not a bad motorcycle. It's sort of the Italian Daytona 675R, but not as good. But with a price tag of $23,000 to start, this three cylinder race bike should be left to your wet dreams and not between your legs. Not only is it on the expensive side of bikes, it is also powerful, fast, and very worthy of a track day. This bike is not beginner friendly because it will be difficult to learn on and handle as a noob. Tackle this beast when you have the experience and you want to say goodbye to your starter bike. Or keep it, because why not? Another thing to consider about MV Agustas is the very limited dealer network. MVs are very particular machines and not everyone will know how to work on them or even have the parts you're looking for. Stick to Japanese or well-known European brands if you want a good support network for your beginner bike in case it breaks down. Number seven, it's the Ducati Panigale V4R. Well, wait a minute. Who would buy a V4R as their starter bike? At $40,000, it's gonna be out of reach for a lot of riders, but someone is gonna buy it as their beginner bike. When someone has more money than common sense, the worst kind of Ducatista is born. In all seriousness, someone somewhere has probably attempted to buy this bike as their starter or actually have it as their starter bike. To be honest, I think I've seen a lot of guys buy a 1299 Panigale as their first bike and then ride it for, oh, I don't know, 10 miles and sell it. Think about the parking lot drops and the winglets breaking or sudden death brought on by the rider. Let's have a moment of silence for these guys. All right, that's enough dead air. Just don't buy this bike as your starter. It has way too much power. It's got 230 horsepower at the Akrapovich race system. It's gonna be too much for even a seasoned 600cc rider to handle. Honestly, guys, I've been riding for five years and I don't wanna to touch this thing with a 10-foot pole. It's not about the money, but more about what this bike can really do and how an unsuspecting rider can easily die or lose control while riding it. Remember, just because you can afford it doesn't mean it's appropriate for you as a new rider. If I had a nickel for every lightly used Ducati I've seen on Craigslist that some rich dude bought and then realized he had no business owning, well, then I'd have many, many nickels. 
Now, while we're on the topic of beginner bikes that are terrible, we should discuss some great options as well, namely the free ones that I'm giving away. We've got a Honda CB650R, a Suzuki DRC400, and a Kawasaki Ninja 400 all up for grabs. Hit the link below to learn how you can get started to win them. Our sweepstakes is gonna go live officially on November 17th, so we're taking pre-registration. If you click below and sign up to get early access, rumor has it you'll get a special discount code and access to all kinds of other cool perks. So hit the link below and get started. Now let's check out the rest of these terrible options for beginners. Number six, it's Harley Davidson. Not all of their bikes are gonna be terrible beginner bikes. They have quite a good selection of starter bikes, but for the most part, a Harley is gonna cost a premium, around $20,000 for a bike, and it's gonna be heavy. As a new rider, you should try to get a bike on the lighter side, anywhere under 400 pounds or something like that is a great place to start. Harley-Davidson makes good motorcycles, don't get me wrong, but they're heavy. A cruiser is different from a sport bike, but a heavy bike is still a heavy bike. Your biggest concern as a beginner is whether or not you can pick that bike up if you drop it and are all alone. If you're going for the cruiser look and want to be conscious about what you're spending on and how expensive things can potentially become, consider a Honda Rebel or something else of similar size. You need trust me on this one, a motorcycle that's lighter so you can really learn how to maneuver on it. Number five, the BMW S1000 RR. For everything that this bike is, it is not a beginner bike. I don't care about the B modes. I don't care about the rider aids. The S1000 RR redefines what crotch rocket really means. The power is refined, smooth, and holy crap, there's just too much of it. I think it's safe to say that no beginner should even attempt to start on a leader bike, let alone an S1000 RR. Besides its cost starting at roughly $16,000, this bike is just too much for the streets. It's really meant for the track and not just squitting around. And if you do own an S1000 RR and don't take it to a racetrack, well, you're kind of just doing yourself a disservice at this point. Regardless, this bike is not for the inexperienced. One wrong move and you'll be riding in a stretcher in the ambulance. I got the chance to ride the latest generation S1000 RR in Jerez earlier this year and holy crap that thing is fast, even in controlled circumstances on the racetrack. Number four, you already know what it is, it's the Suzuki Hayabusa. The Suzuki Hayabusa is a lot of things, and if you know me, then you're not even mad that the Hayabusa made yet another list. Well, to be honest, should a Busa be a beginner bike? All jokes aside, it definitely shouldn't be. The Hayabusa, even though it's not the fastest bike anymore, can be purchased for pennies on the dollar. Cheap Busas on Craigslist make beginners think they should drop the same amount of money on a Ninja 400 or something else that's similar. Now, as we all know, a regular Busa is not a beginner bike. You gotta turbo it so it can be a good beginner bike. The issue with the Hayabusa is that it's a really heavy sport bike. It's more of a cruiser, but it still has that crotch rocket speed. It'll be harder to maneuver at low speeds and will probably kill you at higher speeds. If you don't have throttle control, a Busa is a beginner bike that's gonna be a disaster. Number three is a Craigslist Special. Now this bike can be anything you find on Craigslist, a yard sale, or even your older brother's abandoned project. The Craigslist Special is a bike with an unknown status. Does it run? How fast can it go safely? Who put the chain on and why is it so loose? These are serious questions because on a custom kind of bike, if you don't have any experience, you're gonna get hurt. Terrible ergonomics, a sketchy maintenance history, and the fact that you traded a Lord of the Rings on VHS for this bike makes it unsafe and a terrible beginner bike. The point I'm making is that it might cost you a decent coin to get an R3 or another true beginner bike, but it won't fall apart when you ride it. When you lack experience to react and handle emergency on a bike, it turns fatal, and we don't want that. Also, you wanna spend time riding and not wrenching when you're starting out. Number two, any ninja over 600. All right, Kawasaki, every bike you have is a ninja. So many ninjas, I feel like I'm in feudal Japan trying to not get assassinated. Okay, the Ninja 650 is probably the only pass here, but everything else above a Ninja 400 is probably gonna be too much for a beginner rider. The ZX line of bikes, the H2, all of them are too much. Kawasaki is enticing beginners to try because of its price. Compare bikes side by side amongst the big four and you'll see the Kawasaki's are on the lower priced side. It doesn't mean that the products are inferior, just that you probably shouldn't start on a ZX-10R or even a used ZX-9R, just because it's older doesn't mean it's safer. Say no to the Ninjas, unless it's a 250, a 300, or a 400. 650 is right on the edge, but it's better than a ZX-6R. Are you with me? Too many Ninjas. 
And last on our list, it's special edition bikes. It's not about jealousy or the fact that we don't have the money to buy that super awesome special edition bike such as the R1M, the GSX-R 1000R, HP4, or anything else intended for track and street use. We care about the fact that you're just about to buy a thing of beauty and you're gonna wreck it. Maybe you're super rich from oil money and you live in Dubai. Cool, that doesn't mean you should buy a gold-plated Ducati just because you can. If you have little to no experience riding a motorcycle, it really doesn't matter what you can afford. If you value your life, you should play things safe and start on an appropriate bike. For the rest of us, we'll just watch and cringe when you sit on the bike for 15 minutes trying to figure out how to start it and how to, it's going to get going. We're going to assume you're going to loop it anyways and think to ourselves, that poor bike, its lifespan is going to be under 50 miles. There you have it, 10 no-nonsense bikes that shouldn't be between the legs of a beginner. Do you have anything to add to the list? I think really heavy ADV bikes could also fall in here. We've all seen the cringeworthy videos of a noob getting on the leader bike knowing he's going to crash it. And remember, if you want to avoid the pitfalls of owning one of these terrible beginner bikes, well then all you have to do is hit the link below and get yourself pre-registered for our beginner bike giveaway. You'll get special early access to the giveaway, special discount codes to use on merch, and so much more. Hit the link, get notified as soon as we go live on November 17th, and get yourself started. Thanks again for watching, tune in next time, I'll see you later. Fact. In 2014, T-Mobile successfully trademarked the color magenta, and a Texas judge ruled that similar colors, even with different names, can't be used by other telecom companies. Crony capitalism. It's great. Goodbye. <laughs>